All right, I am quite frankly embarrassed by this engine. I was tempted to not do anything, but Cam told me we should talk about it. So here we are. This is a Coast High Performance 347 small block that was originally set up to go into a 90LX 5 liter Mustang. Now we did a thing on it back when I was in the magazine stuff on talking about the engine. So we were able to get this covered for Coast High Performance. We're gonna talk about it again because this is a pretty cool setup. Now this is a later model Ford block. I am not going to go off into all that because we could be here for days talking about the little subtle changes that Ford made to these things as time went along. But suffice it to say that this is a 90s block. Um, it has a scat crank in it. It has probe pistons in it. Uh, everything, this whole reciprocating assembly has been finely balanced. And what I mean by that is you can see by the big holes that are bored in the front uh, weight on this crank that we've got a full balance. So the back weight is just as, as holy <laughs> as this one is. Uh, there's also balancing holes in here. All of the rods have been worked. They have ARP fasteners on them. Uh, the ring packs in this are a really strong ring pack. The original designation for this engine was to get a uh, Vortex supercharger and to be put in a 90LX 5 liter Mustang. All that went away. A lot of things happened between here and there. And this engine has sat since probably 97-ish, I think. I'm trying to remember what the actual date was that we got the engine. But there you go, that's what it is. My problem is, is I let it sit around and I, I just kind of, uh, you know, sometimes things like that happen. That's all I'll say. We're excited to get this thing rolling. We've already crunked it over a little bit, so to speak, and seen that the engine will turn over. So we're good to go on that. We're gonna talk about a couple of other small things on this. I'm gonna pull Cam in here in just a second. And we're gonna talk about whether you should or shouldn't do things on the bottom end of your Ford small block. Uh, one of the things we're gonna talk about right now is windage tray. Cam. Windage tray. Now yes. we're running. We're running a supercharger potentially. Mm -hmm. Running a supercharger on this engine still. That's where I really want to go. The cam is set up for a supercharger. The compression ratio is supercharger level compression ratio. We're down I think around eight and a half or so, nine to one. So a supercharger is a good idea. Mm -hmm. It's always good. Windage tray. Does a guy really need to put a windage tray on one of these engines? Mm, performance. It helps, but honest. Uh, Road racing is where they really come into play. Yes. Um, or any kind of high G applications. Uh, basically what the windage tray does is it makes a little shield over here and it scrapes oil off the crankshaft. Because when you're running 6,000 RPM consistently, you actually build up a vortex of oil around a crank. Right. And it just scrapes all of that and slings it all into the oil pan. So... And it adds a smidge of rigidity. To yeah, the just a smidge. It doesn't really help a lot. Some yeah. of the early ones, like the Boss 302 ones, they're really more about oil sling than they are yep. about rigidity to the to the actual pan itself or to the uh, rotating Bottom assembly. The yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, on a street engine, I don't know. I mean, we're talking about, it's going to be in a 64 Falcon that has RRS components on it. Yeah. So we mm. should probably... You've seen me drive. Yes. The ability of the vehicle will dictate that it probably should have a windage tray. Okay. So we will go back. We're going to go ahead and put this thing together mm -hmm. uh, without it, but we're going to go back and put a windage tray in it. We'll just, we're going to put the pan on it with possibly the rails on here, the gasket mm -hmm. rails on it, but not tighten everything down to the, you know, to where it should be yeah. so that we can go ahead and make that work. Um, and then be able to pull it back off, put the windage tray in it. We'll do a video on that. If you guys want to see a video on throwing a windage tray on a, on a 302 Windsor, let me know and we'll in the comments below and we'll put that out there. Um, another thing I want to talk about too is I'm going to go and grab it over here. Oil pump. Um, I don't really, you'll see guys going in and putting a lot of things like a high pressure, high volume pump. Mm -hmm. If you go with a high volume pump, your pressure actually increases, right? Yes, because pump makes flow. Pump doesn't make pressure. Restriction right. makes pressure. Exactly, and, and if you've got everything set up correctly in yeah. your block, you should have restriction. You should have pressure. restriction enough to make pressure, because what's going to be happening is if you've got a pro if you've got a problem down here in your mains, yep. and the the you know the uh, crank um, journals are loose or whatever, or they're not as tight as they should be, you're gonna you're gonna lose oil pressure. Yeah. And that's but if you have a high volume pump, you have enough volume of oil to kind of make up for that. Right, and one of the things, like, I'll, I'm, I'm a real big fan of Melling and also mm -hmm. Seal Power, which now Seal Power and Melling are the same yep. company. If you buy a Melling pump, you're going to be buying a Seal Power pump. It's the same thing. So I would, you d I know this is going to sound kind of stupid, but I never put one of these straight in the engine. 
Whenever I'm doing this, I'll pop this cover off and I'll look at everything inside the rotating assembly in here. So you always want to take it apart, know how it comes apart, and then put it back together. This one, everything looks like it's all pretty close. And a lot of guys may tell you, oh, you want to chamfer the hole and mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, there time and a place for it. Max, think, maximum performance and maximum reliability, like race applications, yes. Go in, take the time, gasket match that, gasket match that. Uh, a lot of times you can go in here and with a cartridge roll and there's a corner that you can bore out to get more oil flow, but a street drive you don't need. And, and I look at that and also this one more thing, because then you basically really need to have everything out of yes. here in order to do that yep. as well. So we'd have to take everything apart in order to do. And then and flush I'm, all the riflings and all that stuff. Mm, yeah. No. Mm, mm. No, not, not needed. Doing, not doing it? I'm just not doing it. <laughs> Whether it's needed or not, I'm not doing it. I mean, I might take it to a machine shop and let them do it. I think they actually did got to go in there on this one and muck around with down in the hole some, but I don't think they didn't champ for that. So anyway, oil pumps, bottom line, you want to make sure you get a good pump. Like I said, I like melling and, uh, and seal power. One and the same now. Get a brand new pickup when you're doing this. Don't reuse your pickups. Yeah. They're not that expensive. Nothing is that expensive when you're going to be going in and putting this together. All right, now this pan we got from the guys at National Parts Depot. It is a really nice piece. I have to say this looks just like a stock Ford small block pan. One of the disadvantages of buying an engine like this is it just comes bare. Unless you want to pull all the stuff off of your engine, you're going to have to do just what we're doing here and go in and buy new components. Now the bolt kit we're using is one from AMK. This is actually a match bolt. This is what Ford would have put back in the day. It has all the correct markings and stuff on it. I mean, in some respects, I don't care about that, but in other respects, I like having matchy, matchy stuff like this. Call me crazy. Most of you do. I'm gonna go ahead and finish bolting this thing in. Not tight, just enough. We're basically only, as I like to say, we're only perpetrating here. We're not actually trying to go in and do a final on any of this because we're gonna pull everything back out to do the windage tray. No point in putting the oil pan or the oil pump and all in there until we get the windage tray in. And then we'll do a video showing you how to set that up how to make sure you got good distance on the pan and everything like that. And I'm gonna go through and finish these up and then we're gonna move to the timing cover, which I don't have a new one on that. I'm gonna just reuse one of my old timing covers at this point and make sure we, they'll work out. All right, so I'm going to put the timing cover onto our engine. Uh, this is a used timing cover that we had laying around. This is an earlier model or later model, never sure which one this is. This is an older model, let's just go with that. It's got the boss for a mechanical fuel pump. Uh, we, we will probably be building an EFI system on this and we will go to a newer timing cover. Uh, but for now, we're just gonna put this one on there. A couple bits of business. First, uh, one thing I always like to do, take a bore brush and some penetrating oil and clean out all of these through holes. Uh, pretty much any hole on here that you see, go ahead and clean out, make sure all corrosion is out of there. These things love to corrode all the way down and you basically have to take a chisel and break this off or you get lucky and the corrosion lets go. But if you've ever taken one of these off, you probably know the pain that I'm talking about. So take your bore brush, go through all of your holes, see, Make sure to breathe as much of the corrosion in as possible. Makes you stronger. Don't do that. I'm just stupid. All right, so I'm gonna work these a little bit more. Make sure all of this is clean. Uh, if you have a steel or a brass brush, works a whole lot better, but nylon works just fine. It's got a little bit on the back side.
All right, so I got this all cleaned up. You saw me run a tap through all of these holes and also all of the holes on the block. Anytime you have this thing off, always clean the threads. You could see how much trash was coming out of these. This thing collects corrosion and dirt and schmutz like nothing else on a Ford engine. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and set this in. We're soft assembling this, so I don't have any gaskets on. You would have gaskets on both sides, the oil pan back as well, but we're not doing that for right now because this is all getting disassembled anyway. And also we do not have the full correct bolt kit for the timing cover on this one. Somehow we ordered a 390, 428 kit. So I'm just gonna use these top bolts and this side one here, just so we can bolt on the uh, other accessories that we have. All right, another note on doing timing covers on Ford, it is very wise to use any kind of anti-seize you can. Personally, I like the copper anti-seize when I'm going into aluminum. I don't really think it makes a difference. I just like the different metals rather than aluminum anti-seize in an aluminum cover. It just makes more sense to me. But since we're disassembling this, I'm not gonna goop this up because I will look like the Tin Man by the end of the day. While Cam's over checking out the new stuff from CVS that you guys are going to get to see in a second, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about timing covers because I <laughs> I grabbed the wrong one because this one was the clean one and I thought I had cleaned this one ages ago and I did, but the problem is this is for a 1965 289. The reason I know that is because it has the timing pointer right here because your water pump outlet was on this side. All of your water pump inlet and outlet was on the same side of the engine. In 1969-ish, 1970, if you watched my one that I did on the harmonic balancers, you'll know what I mean by ish. Ford went to a different timing cover setup, and that's this one, because they changed the water pump outlet to this side of the engine. So you have a water pump outlet that comes out over here, and this is a C9 AE uh, timing cover. So it changes everything. And this one, unfortunately, is the one we would need to finish what we're doing today, and so we can't. These are stuck in the, in the um, timing cover uh, and it's just trashed out. This thing was on a, that Comet 302 that we just pulled off of this engine stand to put on the low engine stand so we could do this. So we got an issue here where we're gonna need to get another timing cover. I'm gonna order one from National Parts Depot. They do stock this 70 one, but I'm thinking because this engine will eventually be going in our uh, 64 Falcon with a serpentine belt system and hopefully a sniper EFI, I don't need the fuel inlet on the side of the block. And I might would even just go ahead and run an electric pump on it so that I don't have this boss here in the way of everything. That way it'll be nice and clean. But there you go, that's something. One other thing, Ford was just sucky for this. They would do this all the time. They would make little changes, running changes. It was better from an engineering standpoint, but from a guy 50 years on trying to put something together with an engine that may or may not be in that car, some of these things can just really bite you in the butt the way this bought, bit us in the butt today. We had the harmonic balancer here that we got from NPD and a bunch of other things. So this just kind of stops us at this point. By next week, when we go to put that cool system on the front of this engine, everything will be here. But for right now, we're kind of stuck on this and we're gonna go look at the pretty stuff to make me feel better about this having blown up in my face. I hate to say it, bro. This is making me more excited than I was when I got that Lionel train set when I was eight years old. This is probably some of the prettiest stuff we've ever thrown on the tabletop. Yeah, I think honestly. so too. Yeah. I mean, just the chrome work, let alone the machining. Like, it's just the, yeah, it's really sexy. Man, I like I mounted on a wall. Yeah. It, <laughs> it's just arc. that pretty. It's art. <laughs> There's a lot of machine work on yeah. this table, and the prices on this stuff are really reasonable. I mean, I'm pretty impressed with what I'm seeing out of the out of the company for the yes. pricing. And also a awesome catalog. 
Yeah, you don't this, get this, this anymore. Huge. You, you really don't get this, this much is anymore. NPD. Part, yeah, NPD. They do it. These guys are doing Summit's it. Summit's I mean, got some decent ones. But this is like perfect bathroom reading. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to know what you're doing with that catalog in like, the bathroom. I'm not letting you leave with it now that I've heard that. Um, the the other thing I like about it is they got everything Ford, Chevy, Mopar, yep. I believe. They've everything got, listed out. All the crazy prices. thing, they've already got stuff for the Godzilla, uh, the Godzillas. LT4s, everything. This is pretty cool, man. I was I was impressed with them before we got the stuff in, and I am really impressed with it yep. now. And full pictures, nice color. And next week, if I can get my poop together and get all the parts in that we need, well, we're going to put this on the front of that engine that's on the engine stand over there in the other building. But in the meantime, why don't you do me a favor and go out and check out the Patreon account. At the $10 a month level, you get monthly meetings with me on Zoom. It's really cool. All right, if I've ever done anything to help you out, this guy, all the stuff that we do on the show, you might want to think about joining us on Patreon. You can give any amount you want. If you want to go a dollar, that's fine. If you can afford a dollar a month to help out the kids, feed the children. Andrew had to go on a, what do they call it, a sabbatical today? I think that's what they call me doing a mental clinic. <laughs> <laughs> He's not here to defend himself. He didn't go to a mental clinic. I don't think he did. He didn't say it was a mental clinic. Oh, it was a concert. Yeah. So anyway, he had to go to a concert this weekend. He's not here for us to pick on him, but he is one of the reasons that you guys that are on Patreon are helping out. These names that you've seen going by me either over here or maybe over here, these are the guys who have put their money where their mouth is and they are actually supporting us on a monthly basis. Some people like Pat and some of those guys at the very top of the list that you've seen go by, those folks are really putting good money in toward it to help us be able to have Andrew here on a weekly. Helps me out a ton to have him here. Doesn't seem to be helping me order parts much. I don't think you want him ordering parts. No. <laughs> be ordering like yeah. doers or whatever. I'm gonna get him a chicken Jack in the mail. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Also, <laughs> you and your derailment. <laughs> also, <laughs> subscribe to the channel. We're we're danger close to 100,000 subscribers. Uh, so if you know any of these big channels that are out there, like, I don't know, Cletus McFarland, uh, heck, call Mr. Beast, I don't care. Tell them we need people. We're trying to get past 100,000, so hook us up. If you guys watch these shows, go out and say, hey, you need to go out and you know help these guys out, talk about it on the show. So, be kind to each other, love on each other, treat each other nice. You guys have a great week, and we'll see you next time on Auto Resto Mod. Yes. Yeah. This yeah, it's, it's, uh, this is going to be nice. Maybe we should just buy the car from the dude. Do we have to put it on this car? I kind of already <laughs> told him we were going to, so yeah. Yeah, and his, we, his we, doesn't need it. Yeah, it needs everything, but it really needs a V-belt system, or this system. Yeah. No, it needs a V-belt system. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm having that 40 inch slip where I'm like, I really want to put this on my car. I'm thinking that would look really nice on the, on the Galaxy or the wagon. Ooh, or the yeah, wagon. Yeah. Anyway.